everybody welcome back you guys are doing an amazing job you're really truly doing an amazing job uh, many of you have posted your progress at the quiltshow.com in the forum under my kaleidoscope class so it's really great to see what you're working on um, i really appreciate barbara black for jumping in and answering so many questions and uh, keeping on top of things thank you so much barbara you're you're just an amazing just amazing so thank you and i'm trying to get in when necessary to chime in or uh, like your pictures um, i try to get through all of it there's a lot going on and i've had crazy storms this weekend uh, the biggest storms that we've had in this area since the fire and so a lot of uh, outages power outages internet outages i'm glad to be open today all of that is doing really good so so i think we're working today and that that's great so you guys here's the thing today we are going to be working on the assembly of everything so up to this point uh which is this is the third class of four and i've i've indicated a little thing right here so if you're asking where to find the first two classes go to the quiltshow.com go to the learn section these are also being posted on uh, facebook and on uh, youtube uh, for both myself ricky timms uh, the quiltshow.com uh, alex anderson's page and then on the youtube it's the quilt show page for sure you can find that but if you go to the quiltshow.com and go into the learn section you'll find that and if you are a member of the quilt show and you don't have to be a subscribing member to be in the forum but you do have to have an account and we are working on putting together a special uh, a special subscription for those of you that are doing cool kaleidoscope so please check that out i think there's going to be a posting uh, by the administrator sometime today on youtube and it might also end up in the learn section i'm not sure but you guys just stay tuned we're looking out for you and our last class is going to be friday so that's the last of the of the lessons but then we're going to figure out a good time for you guys to finish up your quilts and then we're going to have a showcase so you can show off your quilts and i'm looking forward to seeing those as well and i'll, I'll make comments on those so it's going to be a lot of fun um, saying hello to all of you that are kind of chiming in and I see that thank you so much you might be watching on Facebook or you might be watching on YouTube but I'm so glad that you're watching so today we have we should have at least uh, if you've done everything up to now you should have a circle on your wall that is just pieces it's not sewn together I urged you not to sew it together until we had this chat today so one of the things that I want to say first is that and we're going to just look at this on the wall i've got my five pieces on the wall so i know how they all fit together i'm using the templates but i want you to be very careful about a template like this one and i mentioned this last time but i want to mention it again because you can fix it now you can't fix it later so easily if you have a template like this one that has a little blunted end and that blunted end might only be a quarter inch or so. It could be very small. You must cut that quarter inch. If you were to leave that to go to a point, then it's like having extra paper and it won't fit together. So just look at your templates, make sure that you've done a quarter inch extra on all of them. And that is a heads up because I've seen it in class so many times where somebody's trying to put this together and they're going, it's just not fitting, it's not fitting. And I'm looking at it and I'm trying to figure out why is it not fitting? And I have enough experience now to know that there might be a little tip cut off on purpose. It's part of the design on one of those templates. So double check that, that is number one. Then the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to sew these in the reverse order of how we drew them. Now, you might have drawn yours differently, but if you followed the general guide that I taught, we drew one, two, three, and four, which gave us the five pieces. And I urged you to number them the opposite way, 
one, two, three, four, five, because that's the order that we have to sew them, which is why the quilt gets on the wall with no more sewing for such a long time, because we have to put the wedges together now, and we're gonna sew these things in that order. Now, get ready for this one. Some of you are the kings and queens of chain piecing. So a lot of you might think it would be just easiest to get all the number ones and twos and the ones and twos and just go to the machine and chain sew those ones and twos. Can I just tell you, please don't, just don't. I have seen it happen too many times where a very expert chain piecer, maybe they just don't have spatial relations, I don't know what's going on. They get things out of order. They're trying to put the puzzle back on the wall. They're pulling their hair out, and I've seen people just wanna throw it in the garbage because they got so confused. The best thing you can do for yourself is just don't chain piece. So piece number one to two. Then add number three, add number four, add number five, and make your wedge. Now, it would be helpful if you took all five pieces of the wedge to the sewing machine. So you sit down and you just do that wedge and then you put the wedge back up on the wall in the place where it belongs. Then move to the next wedge. If you want to, bring it down to the sewing space. So one to two, add three, add four, add five, and then back up to the wall. At this stage, I'm gonna share with you how to sew these angular shapes, but even though we pressed on our strata to one side on one strata and to the other side on the other strata, when I sew these units together, I tend to press these seams open just to remove some of the bulk that's going on. You could go to one side or the other, it's not a real problem, but I'm suggesting that you press these seams open and I'll, I'll try to show you that in just a moment. So now let's look at the angular shapes. When you're sewing angular shapes together, I'm gonna go to my uh, PowerPoint presentation real quick here and see if I can show you this. We're gonna do one wedge at a time, as I mentioned. The piecing order is the reverse of how we drew it. That's another one. And don't tug these bias edges. You've got a lot of bias, so just let everything lay beautifully as you're sewing. And then when you're sewing these angular shapes, this is what I want you to pay attention to. On the left, you see these first two pieces placed right sides together. And because we're sewing a quarter inch seam, you need to have the top piece tucked up a little bit so that when you start sewing, you are right at the V of where that intersection is. It's important for you to know, if this is something new for you, this is important information. It is a quarter inch from the right edge of the sewing. It is not a quarter inch from the point. The more angular it is, the more that point will extend up higher. So it might be, it could be even as much as a half an inch, the point extending up, but you're looking at the distance from the right edge of those fabrics to the sewing line, which should be a quarter inch, not only at the top, but also at the bottom. So this is a big yes. If you look at the one on the left, it's a big yes. In the middle, it's a no. The top piece has been pushed up too high. The stitching is not matching that V. And when it gets to the bottom, it's really not matching that V. And then on this one, this is where sometimes people wanna just put the very point right with the top edge that again is a big no-no. So look at the left, that's the one that we wanna do. I've also shown this to you in stitching. This is on my quilt. This is where that V is at the beginning to make sure we're a quarter inch from the right and that's where the stitching starts. And whenever you get to the end, you're looking at that V again. And hopefully if you've sewn accurately, you've cut accurately, then you should be able to lay these on top of each other with very minimal easing or tugging 
And whenever you sew off that end right there, you end up sewing off right at the V. And then those get pressed open. So that's what I want to share with you first. And I want to show you that on my... I think I'm there. I think I'm there. I think I'm there. You can. There we go. Yep. I'm going to take these off now. So there was my one, two, three, four, five, my, my templates. I have sewn this wedge. <laughs> I'm having trouble with that pin. Let's just get rid of it. So I've used my templates to keep me in order. You can keep those handy for another day. But this is the project. This is a wedge sewn together. I'm going to show you what I did on the back side because indeed I did open those seams along these areas. Okay, These seams are not open because they were the original pressed strata. But where I'm joining the units together, you will probably find it a little bit better. Can I also encourage you again, again, we're talking a lot about bias. When you press these, try not to tug or distort or to pull. Be very gentle with them because you need them to be a really beautiful wedge and they need to really be perfectly done so that you can continue now to have a good perfect circle with your kaleidoscope as you move forward. I want to show you, if you'll remember, whenever we drew the original design, we had two leftover wedges, all right? They were, they were still stuck together today, but when I came in, I've cut them apart. Because these are freezer paper, this is where the freezer paper comes in handy. I told you, you don't have to use freezer paper, but there's good reasons to use it, and this is what I'm using for today. I can now use uh, one of these wedges because the other wedge is cut into templates. I can use one of these wedges as a master template to look and see if my sewing has been done really well so that I have a quarter inch seam on all sides. Let me urge you, if you're doing everything very delicately, very precision as much as you can, when you lay this down, there should be a quarter inch on all sides, and I've successfully managed that on this one. Should you find that your wedge, your fabric wedge is too big and you need to trim, please try not to trim these edges. Only trim off the butt or the wedgie end. And I like to come in so that my inside star will be just perfect, I'm going to probably iron this down and I will then use my ruler and I will put, for example, on this one, I might put a line right on the seam where my green fabric and my yellow fabric have an angle. All right, now why am I doing that? And I'm not gonna hold it up so that you can see. I've put this line on here and it represents the, the between the green and the yellow on this. I didn't have to do it all the way in the tiny part. I did it on this one, which is just fine. And that is because six of these wedges are going to have that angle. And as long as I am putting my template at that spot on all six of them, I know these seams are going to match. And the hardest spot is in this area. As you move out, it's not so bad. You can do a little fussing, a little easing. I'm not a pinner either. I mean, I am a pinner when it needs to, but on this one, you're gonna find that when you put these right sides together, because these seams are going in opposite directions, they're going to tuck into each other, and this is gonna be very easy to sew. And if you miss a seam, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look you in the eye for this. If you miss a seam, just a smidge, don't pick it out. I promise you there's so much going on in this quilt. There's so much going on that a little seam mismatch with all of those angles is not gonna be the same as mismatching a four patch or a nine patch. So don't get too fussy about it. And if you've cut your strips the way I've told you, they're going to match. They're going to, because you cut both of them at the same time. So that's my biggest tip for this. 
And after you've pressed this on, I'm going to tell, well, sorry, not, not pressed it yet. I'm, I've drawn this angle, and I told you there's six of these that you can use, but what about the other six? Because that angle is on this side. That is where I would use the other template. I'm going to darken this just a little bit with my pencil. I also, I do like regular pencils because the lead is a little more sturdy. I get a little more out of it. But watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to lay this. This is now dull side to dull side. I'm going to put this second wedge right on that line and I can, I can see this through. You may not be able to see it, but I can see it. And I'm just marking this because by doing so, I just made a, like a carbon, a carbon copy of that. There we go, there you can see it. So now I have both angles. I have one wedge that I can use for six of these to make sure they're all good. Again, if I'm going to trim, and I hope you don't have to, only trim on the outside edge, and the other six are going to be, you know, adjusted with this one so that you'll know when it comes time to sewing these together in the quilt that these are going to match up. So I think it works out really good. There you go. I think you can see that. Those will end up matching, and you'll have a really, really nice kaleidoscope. All right, the last little thing about this wedge is that when you iron it on to do your testing, even if you don't have to trim, I want you to put a dot. Now, I, I'm, I don't have an iron on this table right now, so you're just going to have to imagine one. I want you to put a dot right at the tip. Mark it with a chalk marker or a pencil, whatever you need to do. All 12 wedges will need a sewing dot so that you'll have a place to stop and backstitch. Because when we join these together, you're going to sew from the outside down and you're going to stop at the dot and backstitch. Now, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I'm just trying to prepare this wedge. We are not ready to sew this wedge to another wedge. You will sew to the dot and back stitch, but before you do that, you now need to add the wedgies and the butts. Remember those guys? On this quilt, I want you to notice that my wedgie is like a teal turquoisey piece, and the corner is a darker blue, and so all of my wedgies are a lighter color and all of my butts are a different color. You now have to start thinking, what do you want to do? Because if you, again, if you search online or look at some of the pictures, you will see that some people like to have their kaleidoscope completely floating in a circle of all one fabric, and that's totally fine. In this case, I used the lighter fabric because my border and this was one of my early kaleidoscopes, I wanted to continue that kind of flying out seam in my border. So I wanted to have two different colors. And on the quilt that I'm gonna show you today, my wedgies are gonna be one color and the butt is going to be a different color. But should you choose to make them all the same, it's 100% okay. It's just a design choice for what you want for your particular quilt. So I wanna tell you how I cut these out so that they go really easily. I'm gonna do the wedgies first, and I'm gonna show you that on, on this, if you actually use, you have two wedgies, right? I want you to know that the longest edge is your straight of grain. This is going to attach on this edge to your wedge, but this is the outside edge. The longest side is the outside edge, so that is your straight of grain. If you end up taking both of these and ironing them on, and I have folded my fabric so that there are four layers, 
even if you're using a commercial fabric with a right side and a wrong side, that means that you're going to have right side, wrong side, right side, wrong side, which is okay because I need four of these and four of these. And if I lay it out this way, I can cut these, making sure I've got a quarter inch in between, I can cut these out by having my long edge and my long edge on the fabric, and I could literally cut all sides of this one, add quarter inch, add quarter inch on the three sides of that one. I have eight wedges, and by doing it, I'm just cutting them twice, but I'm getting all eight. I will have the four of this one and the four of this one that need to fit into the project. So it's a time saver just to cut four layers at a time. And so even if you're using commercial fabric, that works. Does that make sense? I don't need to cut it out for you because I think you got that. On the butt, I kind of do the same thing. A fat quarter works really well for this. My butt, it has a right angle and that's the corner of the quilt. So you want to put those on straight of grain, cross grain, making sure that you've got your right angle at the 90 degree. And if you put it on a folded so that there's four of them, because it is a perfect mirror image, you can cut this out one time and you've got all four pieces. Just remember you must add a quarter inch outside your paper because your paper is the thinnest size. So that's how I do the wedgies and the butts. Another thing I'll say, and I didn't mention wedgies and butts fabrics until today, and, and not even borders. We're gonna be talking about borders on Friday, so let's don't even talk about that too much today. But with your wedgies and butts, it's hard to know what fabric that you will use for them until you have your quilt on the wall. Once you get your quilt, the main circle on the wall, then you can say, oh, I think this fabric would work or that fabric might work. You could, you could actually paper piece. If, you know, if you could make four, four butts, you could draw a design on your butt and you could create something there if you wanted. I know that's complex, but some of you might go, hey, your brain is starting to work because from here out, it's going to be your ideas, your thoughts before any wedges can get sewn together you must add the appropriate wedgie or butt so you do the one two three four five add the wedgie or the butt one two three four five add the wedgie or the butt so i might suggest before you start sewing cut out your wedgies and your butts put them all on the design wall so that your circle now goes to a square and that you like what you see I'm gonna show you the, what I would recommend, and that is, let's go to um, Ecamm, sorry. I wanna to go to sharing my screen again. And I want you to, I, so there's the example of using the uh, template and marking the dot, and if you make an adjustment, cut off the end. But this is this is what many of you should have right now. You've got your, 12 wedges on the wall. The white lines are showing that they're not sewn together. They're just on the wall. And I would recommend that the next thing you do is put up your butts. And the reason I recommend that you put up the butts is because it should now start looking like a square and you will see which one of those wedges needs that butt. All right, so it looks more like a square. The other thing is, because I've seen this happen so many times, and some people, especially if they're using batiks, they will get their uh, one of the wedgies, and I'm going to show you. This is up at the top. Look up at the top, how that wedgie got put on upside down, and that angle is not working correctly right there. By having the butt on the wall first, it is easier for you to orientate those wedgies Remembering the longest side is the outside edge of this quilt. So now I've put in the 12, sorry, the eight wedgies 
four butts, eight wedgies, and now your kaleidoscope has turned into a square. And each of these wedges, the, the five pieces for your cool kaleidoscope, each of those now has the appropriate wedgie or butt sewn onto it so that your open, unsewn seams are all the way from the center, all the way out to the edge of the quilt. So now the wedges have their wedgies and butts on them. When you now start sewing this together, you're going to sew from the outside edge to the point matching the dots. You may want to pin that, and you will stop at the dot and backstitch one or two stitches on each of these. All right, so that's extending out to the edge. You will now assemble this doing three units at a time. So for example, this is the upper left quadrant. It is made from three wedges. Two of them have wedgies. One of them has a butt. You will join those three together and breathe. Then you go to the three on the upper right. You will join those together. Okay, take a breath, put it up on the wall. Do the bottom quadrant and the other bottom quadrant and now you have a four patch to put together. You're going to sew the top left and right together from the outside to the dot, back stitch. Same thing at the bottom, sew from the outside, sew the left half and the right half together up to the dot and back stitch. And then when you join the two together, I would not sew all the way across. I would still sew from the outside to the dot on one side, back stitch, and from the outside to the dot and back stitch again to, to finish the body of the quilt. Isn't that exciting? Doesn't it look great? So you guys, here's the thing. On the forum of the quilt show, there is a great place for all of you. Many of you may have tips and tricks on how best you think that center should be treated. I've told you how I'm doing it, but my way is not the only way in the world. So if you've got some great tips or tricks for doing the center of this kaleidoscope, then please chime in and add your thoughts. I also want to say this. The center of this quilt is the only really fussy kind of frustrating thing that can happen. But don't get that under a microscope. I'm going to show you something here. So let me, oh, before I leave this, let me just show you this. This again, this is just another way to show you how it is constructed and the borders can get done as they want to get done. And I've got, uh, I've got a spam call coming in. I have my phone on you guys because um, I'm, I have a help with the quilt show if there's any questions coming and I want to hear, be able to hear that. So, um, so that's the final assembly. This is, this is my quilt that we've been looking at and, uh, and how that goes together. So let me leave the ECAM, sorry, exit, and get out of that. I already forgot what I was about to tell you. That's just so typical of me. Um, um, oh, I know what I wanted to tell you. Yeah, the center. If you were to look at this center of this quilt, and I'm not going to pull it up close because I would be pointing out a flaw. It's not perfect. It's pretty darn good, but it's not perfect. And remember I used a fabric in the middle that's got a lot of activity going on, so that hides that center. And that's what I did on purpose so that it would look okay. And when anybody walks up to this quilt and looks at it, nobody is gonna walk up and go tisk, 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 tisk. It's just not absolutely perfect because the impact of this quilt is so much more exciting. Could we all just stop pointing out our flaws? That would be a good thing, all right? So I feel like that's taking us up to, um, taking us up to getting the square before the borders, which is what we will talk about next time. You might wanna again study some just cool kaleidoscope Ricky Tims on uh, Google searching and images just to look at what people did for borders because the borders are going to be your own magic. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but we are going to talk about some options on Friday this week. 
One thing that I failed to mention to you back on the first, uh, uh, I guess last Friday, on the drafting day of the pattern, I told you I would tell you how to resize this, and I apologize I forgot to do that in that uh, chat. Whatever your square is, we started with 18 inches, and we drew 18 inch lines, and we put dots, and we connected the dots. If you wanna start with 10 inches, then you draw 10 inch 30 degrees, connect the dots. And you might only have three little units instead of five. If you wanted a bigger kaleidoscope, you could say have a 22 inch square and you would draw 22 inch lines, put the dots and then connect the dots. And if it's 22, if the paper's 22 inches square, you've got a 44 inch kaleidoscope before adding the borders. So that's how you adjust the size to the pattern Whatever your square is, if it's a 12 inch square, your lines go all the way across, you put the dots on the lines at 12 inches and you connect the dots. And whatever that measurement is, 12 times two, 24, is what size this quilt would be before you add borders. And the cool thing is you're drafting your own pattern. So you can make it any size that you want. I've had students make, I mean, king size quilts. If it gets a little crazy, it gets a little big, and there's some ways that I can show you to do that on Friday, but I did fail to tell you how to change the size of the pattern. Most of you are going with the 18 inch and yay, I mean, I think that's great, but that was a piece of missing information. So, um, yeah, yeah, Peggy, I'm with you. If you can't see the mistakes from a galloping horse, then let's just enjoy the process. This is all meant to be fun. So I'm wishing you all the best as you push through um, if you have any, you know, pressing questions, um, then, and I don't mean pressing as in pressing, I mean if you have anything that's just really struggling, put it on the forum. The Quilt Show members are going to come to your rescue. Barb Black, Barbara Black will be there, and I will be there as, as I can to, to respond to you as well. So I hope that you're having fun with your cool kaleidoscope. Can I remind you, it's not finished until it's finished and so please don't self judge don't self get and second guess your choices just go with the flow let it happen let it be what it's going to be you're going to continue building this and when we discuss borders on friday it is going to be magic like nobody's business so you've got to get the whole thing done before you can say i don't like it and I don't think you're going to say that. I think you're really going to like it. And if you don't, somebody in your family or some of your friends are going to think you're amazing because these quilts are amazing. So, everyone, thank you so much for being with me today. Um, I don't think I've missed any of the little steps. Let me look at my notes real quick. Yep, the sewing order, angular shapes, pressing the seams open, testing for accuracy with those templates, putting the dot there, um, add, it, add the wedgies and the butts appropriately, and then sew to the dot and backstitch, and I think you're gonna have your cool kaleidoscope uh, rocking and rolling, and I can't wait to see your pictures. Everyone, thanks so much for your time with me today. Yay, I'll see you next time.